Number 30, William Barrier down to carry. 79. She brought down by number 79, Chris Shane. Should we do cheerleaders now or should we wait? Perry Yard on the carry for Bertrand. Bertrand will have the ball second and seven from the 19 to start the second quarter. In the bottom of the fourth from Cleveland, Cleveland two, Houston one. Tigers currently hold a six game lead over Cleveland. Bertrand will receive to start the second half. Drew Petrowski to kick for the Dukes. fourth quarter. Fumble on the play. Recovered by the Dukes. Any parental support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. From Coach Chisner. I don't think I would do that. After all the field. The final score from Ed Harvey Field. Dukes 43. Panthers 12. Thank you for coming out to tonight's ball game. We hope to see you again sometime soon. Just a reminder to everybody that the state, the uh, Essexville Garber Stadium soccer game is tomorrow night at seven o'clock against John Glenn. Come out and show your support for the Garber Varsity Dukes in soccer. The Dukes will come back here at Harvey Field to face the North Branch Broncos next week. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. right here at Ed Harvey Field. Thank you very much for coming out tonight and have a safe drive home. Welcome to the Tom Green Show. As you've just seen, that was footage of me announcing the varsity football game from a couple Fridays ago against the Birch Run Panthers. Did a good job, too. Very good job. Thanks, Adam. And with that, Adam Dustin is once again back on our show after a couple, well, me being on vacation, and then well, as soon as I came back, then he went on vacation. So, yeah. unfortunately, we apologize to our fans. We weren't able to do a show about the Little Brown Jug, but uh, just like every year of, of my existence, except for was it either 07 or 05, we kept the Brown Jug. Yes. It's a good thing we didn't do a pregame show anyway, because it would just be me going, I swear to get out there. And maybe, so, yeah. Maybe Michigan, um, maybe they just wanted us to take a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, all of my predictions were way off about Michigan so far. But, hey, you know what? They won, and that's all that matters. The team that didn't win was Penn State. They got annihilated by Indiana. <laughs> the first time Indiana beat Penn State? Am I correct in football? Yeah, it was they. It was like nineteen oh and nineteen or something all time or something mm -hmm. like that. They had never won there and they took it to them. So mm -hmm. that's I don't know if that's good for Michigan or bad for Michigan. It's either a good yeah. sign that Penn State's not that good or it's a bad sign because Penn State's going to be really mad that they lost to Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think Penn State's very good and I think Michigan's playing better. Their offensive line. Yeah, they reshuffled it. They were pretty good. Tucson got some holes. Derek Green finally got to see him run the ball. There was actually a couple holes to run through, and you could see some flashes with him. So Yeah, Michigan, they desperately needed that bye week. <laughs> and so did probably most of their fans because of what, what happened the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, they the first quarter was not that great. But once, but once the second quarter went on, Michigan started playing Michigan football, mm -hmm. and they played and they won that game like Mich as Michigan should beat Minnesota, especially with Jerry Kill having a uh, suffering another seizure. Yeah, yeah, it was too bad. You know, I'm sure that was one game he wanted to be at, and yeah, it's a tough situation for that guy. Mm -hmm. You got to wonder if he's gonna come back next year. Mm -hmm. Uh, if he keeps having these seizures on game day, but yeah, there's that inconsistency with the team, so I gotta think his his days are pretty much mm -hmm. numbered. So, which is too bad. He seems like a good guy. Yeah. Fun fact: about 25 minutes away from this studio is Saginaw Valley State University. Jerry Kill once coached at SVSU. You know what? I think I heard that once. I forgot completely about that. 
Well, I'm an SVSU alum, so that, that hits me harder. Not really, but, uh, yeah, well, interesting fact, indeed. Um, all that matters is that Michigan, though, responded from their poor outings against Akron and UConn, and they looked better. Yes. They're still not great. They're not a great football team. I don't yeah. go on record, and Michigan State's a better football team right now. Their defense is really good, and their offense is starting to put a more efficient sort of system together. And uh, they actually had a couple plays over 40 yards, and they hadn't had any of those all year. They beat a pretty solid Iowa team. So right now, Michigan yeah. State's a better team than Michigan is. So a long will, way to go till November. And I will say, there is an actual way that State could beat U of M. And I hope that D'Antonio does not listen to anything of what I'm about to say right now. But if Gardner plays like he did in the two weeks prior, like against um, Akron and UConn. If, if Gardner plays like that, and their defense is not that great, basically against Akron and UConn, Michigan played both sides of the ball bad. They were just lucky to have Tucson, and they were just lucky, let's face it. But the, the, the game will be decided when Michigan is on offense. That also means when State is on defense. If State plays like they did against Iowa and like they did against Youngstown State and their offense is halfway, is, is decent, I shouldn't say halfway decent, but full way decent, I'm a little afraid. <laughs> well, what, what Michigan State's going to do, it's, it's exploit Michigan's weakness, which is we don't have great wide receivers. They're going to, all year they've been very, mm -hmm. very physical man coverage, and then they've been blitzing the gaps. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to jam Jeremy Gallon and J.U. Chesson mm -hmm. and whoever else they might throw out there at wide receiver, and they're going to blitz our O-line, which hasn't been good. So they're going to try to force, I uh, almost said Denard, Devin Gardner into turnovers. And then they're going to just be mm -hmm. efficient. They're going to run power football. They're going to run efficient out routes offensively. And right now, that kind of system will beat Michigan. Michigan is not good enough yet on either side of the football. So right now, Michigan State's a better team. And I, I guess I'll go on record saying I almost think Michigan's year is next year, just like the past couple. You know, I, I think they're still two years away. I think next year they're going to have another great recruiting class. Guys will still mm -hmm. develop more. Devin Gardner will be better. But I really think it's going to be the following year when Shane Morris takes over and you have Drake Harris. And Drake you have Harris Jabril Peppers. is a, I believe Drake Harris is a senior this year. Am I correct? Yes. So Drake Harris, I, I, I heard rumors that he's going to graduate after the fall semester and join the team in spring, which that'll be huge. That'll be huge. And then, remember, they're going to get Jabril Peppers, who's, yes. depending on which side, is like number one, number two, number three player in the country. Uh, he's an exciting guy. He'll be coming in. And then Michigan right now is considered the front runners for Deshaun Hand, who's the number one player in the country. He's a defensive end. Um, so you get those guys in next year. They get a year under their belt. All the other great recruiting classes get another year under their belt. And then the, the year after that, I think, is the year where they'll really start to become – uh, more like Ohio State is, but I think better because I do think Ohio State's overrated right now. Yes. And then they're also getting a guy named George Campbell, who is a six foot five uh, wide receiver from Florida, who runs right now as a, a sophomore. He runs a four three seven forty. He's a, he's going to be a five star. He's going to be a huge recruit. But when he's in there, he could be an instant impact from day one. You have that guy with Drake Harris and some of the other guys we have. Remember Amara Darbo, who was injured and lost for the year, will be back. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really two years from now is when Michigan, I think, that's the year where it's like we'll find out if Hoke and company are really here to, to make a difference. Or I think we'll win a lot of games this year and next year, but I think our, our year to break out will be two years from now. That guy was a sophomore in high school and ran a 4-3-4? Yeah, there's say? a video of him doing it. So he's going into his junior. He committed to Michigan already. Uh, wants to be a doctor. So he's all about education. Loves Brady Hoke. Loves the school. Um, ran that at some sort of combine in the off season of last year. So he was like going into his junior season. So he was sophomore, junior when he did it. Uh, wow. And then, yeah, so he'll be here in not next year, but the year after that. And what's up, dog? I still can't believe that. <laughs> Dude, this dog can't believe that. I know. It's like... 
Oh, oh, yeah. what? Yes, you want. I know it. He's... He wanted me to remind everybody that uh, we have to give a shout out to Andre Pipkins, defensive tackle of Michigan, who's out for the year with an ACL tear. He was a five star guy. He was starting to improve, and we're going to miss him the rest of this year. That's a huge yes. loss for Michigan's That's... defense. But we'll see that guy next year. Yes. We'll see him yes. next year. And uh, don't forget that Brady Hoke is still undefeated at home. That's right, bud. Brady Hoke is still undefeated at home. Oh, heck yeah. And I think it'll stay that way probably till Ohio State. So I, that that was my next point. Where's the Ohio State game this year? It's, it's in Michigan. So uh, you know what, Doug? You know what, Doug? This is this is totally this is unprofessional. This is totally unprofessional. Yeah, Ohio State <laughs> is at Michigan this year, and I think Ohio State's they're they're way too good for Michigan. Although they're not they're not as good as the SEC schools. So. But what but what did we learn from last week? Ohio, Ohio State, State is not only beatable, they're but they're very beatable. Yeah, they don't have a defense. Teams with good offenses are going to score a lot of points on them. So if you get a team out there, let's say like maybe Oregon, that has a really great offense mm -hmm. and has some sort of a defense to go with that, uh, Ohio State's overmatched, and they really are. And Northwestern ran the ball, they passed the ball, they did everything. And it was only in the end of the game, near the end of the game, that and, – and what killed Northwestern is they had to settle for field goals. You settle for mm -hmm. field goals against top-notch opponents, and it kills you every time. And three times in a row they got to the 10-yard line and couldn't punch it in, and, yeah, that killed them. But, yeah, Ohio mm -hmm. State's very beatable. They're not, they're not that great. They're good for a Big Ten school, but they're not SEC mm -hmm. caliber. A&M would probably kill them. Oregon would kill them. Alabama, I think, would kill them. Um, they're just, they're not really that good. But they're still better yeah. than Michigan. You never know. Yeah. I, unfortunately, Urban Meyer is now 18-0 and 0 at Ohio State. Well... They really haven't played a whole lot since he's been there, though. I mean, it's great. He's 18-0. He hasn't lost a game, yada, yada. But it's like the non-conference schedule they've had has been a complete joke. The Big Ten itself yes. has been a joke. It's like, has, have they really beaten anybody great since he's been there? It's like, no. They've beaten some decent teams, but not great teams. Almost lost to Michigan State last year. It's like... No, it's it's not as mm -hmm. big of an achievement. Now, if they go undefeated this year and play, let's say, Alabama or Oregon and win the national title, then it's more legit. But yeah. it's like their non-conference schedule this year was so bad. It's like, of course they've, they're have they undefeated this year. They haven't played anybody yet. Yeah, they played. Well, they played Northwestern. That they was the played first good Florida A&M, which is basically the university of my arm and leg. Yeah. And they, and they won 76 to nothing. Northwestern was the first good team they played. And they're not a great team. They're just a good team, and they almost lost. So Wisconsin's mm -hmm. okay, but I think the verdict's out on them. They lost to Arizona State. They got screwed over and lost to Arizona yeah, State. Yeah, they did. I mean, the quarterback screwed up, too. I mean, he needed to he needed to knee the ball down, stay on the ground, and put the ball in front of him instead of – I was I probably would have done the same thing as those officials. I wasn't sure he needed the ball down. He did it so quickly. Because I think they mm. thought he had fumbled it because he didn't actually touch the ground. So yeah. Part of me gives those refs a break that it was weird what the guy did. And by the time they sort of figured things out and made a decision, they should have stopped the clock to make mm. the decision. But, hey, those yeah. are the breaks. Yeah. One bad break leads to a loss. Yep. <laughs> it can.